Um, I just want to know what's being done to uh, bring in more businesses other than lowering taxes. I mean, that, that's kind of the mantra generally, but uh, other than that, what, what are the efforts being uh, done to bring businesses, new businesses in the state and expand the businesses that are here as well as uh, other other states? What, you know, have you looked at other states and, and what are they doing? Okay. Uh, very good question, and it's something that I personally am involved with every single day. Uh, yesterday afternoon, we spent the afternoon talking to main businesses, some 50 businesses, and asking them, what can we do as government to help you hire more people? One, uh, today we were around meeting with companies, asking them what are the problems that are being caused or hindering your growth. Uh, either by state government, federal government, or what are the issues? And I will tell you where we are right now. Back in January, uh, when we first took over, major issues, healthcare, uh, education of our students, or, or, or the quality of our workforce, and energy, and regulations. And of course, cash flow of the state because of the pensions. That was fixed. We put, we passed LD 1333, which is health care reform, which unfortunately, because of the fiscal condition of the state, could not be implemented all at once. It's going to have to be staged in. So you're only seeing bits and pieces of it, and it's going to cost. You're not going to see cost savings until the full thing is implemented. Also, there's some issues with affordable health care at the federal level. It's in court whether or not it will survive and not survive, so there were some issues there. Another big issue was regulations. We passed LD1. LD1 was an attempt not to eliminate regulations, but to streamline them and make things quicker. It's not a matter of getting rid of them, it's a matter of making a system that we can understand the problems quicker and get <laughs> permitting and licensing and those things through the process much quicker and eliminate delays. That was done. The two big issues right now, and we have been meeting, I met in August, I met out of September and met again yesterday. We're gonna meet again next week with a bunch of businesses, another group of businesses in uh, the Bangor area, and then I believe the following week with a group in the Lewiston area. Three major issues that are on the front burner. And believe me, folks, there's no secret to this. If the climate, the business climate, is good and healthy in Maine, investors will invest. Because they want to profit. Major issue in Maine, and one of the major hindrance of attracting new capital in the state of Maine is energy costs. The state of Maine currently pays 42% above the national average. 42% above the national average. We have states like South Carolina, Pennsylvania, uh, South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Florida that pay half as much as we do for electricity. That, if that problem isn't solved, we will not prosper, and we will fail in bringing companies in. That is the number one problem on the, on, on the plate. I am going after that in January. Last January, I asked the uh, Energy Committee to reduce the uh, renewable energy portfolio which stood at 34%. They voted just the opposite to increase it to 44%, which means that energy costs are going to go up. It is not, it is not the role of government to sit in Augusta and raise electricity rates. That is absolutely not our role, and I'm going back in January, and I'm going to fight to lower the energy costs. Second problem, you see this most beautiful building. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year to build beautiful schools. 
but we won't pay our teachers. That's disgraceful. We do not pay our teachers, and we do not insist on our teachers continue their further development. The United States of America has fallen from first in the world to 27th in the world in education, K through 12. 21% of the kids that enter high school never finish. 54% of the kids that do graduate and go on to community college have to take remedial courses prior to starting college courses. If you go on to the university system, 20% of the kids that go to our university system need to take remedial courses before they can start their college career. The cost of edu higher education is skyrocketing. It's, it's going up at twice and three times the rate of inflation. We are getting to the point where Mainers simply cannot afford to send their kids to college. So we have a plan. We, the commissioner and I, we said earlier, we've been studying some of the top educational systems around the world. We have some pilot programs going on around the state right now. University of Maine in Fort Kent has taken about two dozen 11th graders and they're going to do their 11th and 12th grade at the university level with the hopes that they can push them and, and, and work with them to get through two years of college in the next two years. We're going to elevate the standard and we're going to push our kids a lot harder in school. We're going to take a look at our teacher force and we're going to make sure that our teachers have course content. In other words, they have proficiency in the courses that they teach, not just a teaching certificate. We have found that the top 10 countries around the world have one thing in common. They do not have anything called a teaching certificate or a teaching license. What they have is proficiency in a subject matter and then they learn how to teach. And they learn how to teach in some countries with, with, through a master teacher, in other words, people teaching with them and watching them and assessing them. And in other situations, they take methods courses for a year. So we're looking at those things. The one thing that the business people are telling us, and the very first thing they bring up, is we're looking we have jobs. We have good jobs. IDEX. They're looking for engineers. Uh, semi, uh, the uh, uh, Fairchild Semiconductor is looking for engineers. People are looking for draftsmen. They're looking for machine operators. But we have an unemployment rate well above 7%. But the people unemployed don't have the skills needed to take these jobs on. That's the problem. Now, why, how did we get there? About 20 years ago, we decided that every kid's going to go to college. We don't need business courses. We don't need trade and vocational courses. We threw them out, and we went from a 10% dropout rate to a 21% dropout rate. We cannot expect, we cannot expect to to say that every child's going to go to college. It's not going to happen. Some kids learn with their hands, some kids learn visual. There are different ways to learn and there are different interests. We've taken shop, home economics, and business courses out of our schools and put them into tech centers. And we call them second class citizens. We need to pull it back into the mainstream. We're going to need electricians. We're going to need electricians, plumbers. Uh, we're going to need cat operators. We're going to need machinists. Right now, we have been asked to find machinists, qualified machinists, to go to work at several companies in the state. If we could find a dozen machinists today, we could put them to work tomorrow. But we can't find them. 
We had one company yesterday tell us that they're in Massachusetts recruiting for IT people because we don't have them. They're trying to recruit them in, in the Boston area because we don't have them. We don't have enough kids. So those are the type of things that we need to do. The commissioner, I will let him have his say. And I'll take the rest of the program. <laughs> So these are the issues that we have. Those are two major issues. And then the third one is continued work in, uh, in fine-tuning our work in regulations. Some of the regulations we have are just irresponsible. Right? They're, they're just so anti-business, anti-work. Uh, I'll give you an example. I found out today, I didn't realize this, that if a, if a paper mill has a planned shutdown, they plan it every year. They're going to shut it down and do some maintenance on the equipment. They are required by law to pay vacation if the person's accumulated vacation and that person also qualifies to collect unemployment for the same week. <laughs> What's wrong with that program? <laughs> they get two pays in a week if they, if they shut the mill down for maintenance. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. Sorry to interrupt him when he's on the roll. Commissioner, do you have anything to add? I do not. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to you later. 